Special thank you to my YouTube members and patrons for supporting the channel and supporting my content. How's it going everybody and welcome back to another subreddit video. Today we are going to be taking a look at a subreddit I've not taken a look at before and this is going to be an interesting one. Today we are taking a look at r slash true off my chest, a subreddit for confessions, people getting things off their chest I guess, but like darker than I guess regular off my chest which exists. I don't think these are going to be particularly fun but they, they should be full of drama so let's take a look I guess. My boyfriend asked for a paternity test for our child. As soon as the results come and show he is the father, I'm leaving him. I'm a new mum to a baby boy who is my pride and joy, and though it's been a roller coaster adjusting to taking care of a baby, the past few months have been great. Tiring, but great. I have a boyfriend of three years who is the first person relationship wise I have ever loved, and I thought we were doing great as new parents, but also as partners. Friday he came home and asked me for a paternity test. Just like that. It was completely out of the blue. I was putting away the dishes and he asked for one. Like he was asking what was for dinner. I'm a different race from him, but our child, apart from the skin tone, is literally his mirror image from pictures I have seen of him when he was a baby. I was stunned when he asked and his reasons were that he had to be sure he was the father. He had to have that certainty. All I remember as he was speaking is just immediately feeling pain. The man I love doesn't trust me. He would actually believe that I would fuck someone else, cheat on him, and then try to pass off another man's baby as his. I have never ever given him reason to think I would cheat on him. I have tried to be transparent and communicated and it wasn't enough. He told me he would give me time to think about this, that he wouldn't go behind my back and do this test, but for our relationship to move forward, he needs to be 100% sure. He repeated this because he, in his words, needed me to realize how serious he was. After thinking for a couple of days, I'm going to allow him this paternity test because I have nothing to hide. I never cheated and would have never cheated on him. Once it's proven that he's the father, I'm ending it, leaving the same day, and I'm going to try my best to be a cooperative co-parent with him. In the meantime, I'm coming up with my ex plan. A place to live and a lawyer to work out a custody arrangement and court. I can't even tell my family or my friends right now because they would go nuclear and my first priority is our child. I hope the test was worth it to him. I'm not asking for advice or reassurance to explain his side. I'm just, I'm just realizing this part of my life is now over. What a way to start the new year, huh? This was definitely a roller coaster. Yeah, honestly, if your partner can't trust you, that you they are the real parent like if there are already those trust issues in a relationship then the relationship's not gonna really go well like kind of end of you know like if you did cheat and they had reason to think you cheated and wanted the paternity test then that's an issue because there was already cheating involved and if you didn't cheat and they wanted the paternity test then that's an issue because it shows trust issues so like there's no way that this goes that that's not kind of a red flag in a relationship honestly the fact that the op here is willing to co-parent they're willing to co-parent from the very beginning they want to like be a cooperative co-parent shows that they are thinking this through they are being logical in this like it it shows a it, it's a good step immediately so like yeah i this was probably the right choice. I pretend I'm an influencer, so I'll do basic chores. For the past three months, I've been pretending to be an influencer. I tend to go through serious bouts of depression. I won't shower or eat, I just lay in bed and rot. However, I've recently discovered that if I record myself and pretend that I'm talking to an audience, I'm able to motivate myself to get ready and go to work. This also goes for my chores. I'll do a time-lapse video of myself doing the dishes, laundry, and everything else that I need to do. I don't post these videos anywhere, and I don't show these videos to anyone. They're just really fun to look back on and it makes me happy to see that I've accomplished things while feeling shitty about life. This is a really wholesome one. If that's a, a good way of getting you out of your depression and getting you to do things when you're feeling depressed, then like that's ultimately just a good thing. Like keep doing that. If, if that's motivating you to do these things, it doesn't matter if you're uploading these or not. If, if you're enjoying it and you're enjoying looking back on these, then that's great. That's just a great thing. I find this one really wholesome. I like that. I wanted to put this one in there because I wanted a wholesome moment because, oh boy, are a lot of these not wholesome. <laughs> in fact, there were some really awful ones on here that I'm not putting in this video because I don't want to get demonetized. <laughs> so wholesome moment.
I handed him divorce papers today over his Reddit account and a bag of chips. Obviously it goes without saying it wasn't just the bag of chips, but hot cheetos were my breaking point. I couldn't take it anymore. I had already had the terms of separation drawn up six months ago, when during a heated argument he said, we don't have kids, you should be thankful it's only me you clean up after. I kept hearing it in my head, thankful, for cleaning up after a grown man ten years older than me. He apologised, the next day, in detail, and told me why what he said was wrong, and that he doesn't believe it. But maybe it's just out of my character but I don't think the things you say in those moments are just hurtful words. Little bit of truth in them. And then I found his Reddit account a few days ago. I accidentally saw the username when he showed me a screenshot. I tried, Lamone, not really, to not memorize it. And it took me two days to get the courage to look. In between the comments on NSFW subreddits was complaints about me, and posts about me too. One post, he'd be ripped to shreds and told he was a piece of crap. Reading those comments made me realize I was nothing but a fucking idiot idiot to think love can fix things. I was 20 when I met him, and he was 35. I thought people were being dramatic or annoying about our age gap because my single father who raised me didn't have an issue, but then I realised he was just the same type of f***ing creep. It was almost like my father pre-groomed me to accept certain behaviour to make it easier for the other men in my life. I'm getting off topic, but I came home early today after a rough day at work and finding out my direct reporting manager had been k-worded by her husband, then walked in the door to see my lazy filthy one. I told him what happened to her. I started to cry. He didn't console me. He said, we don't know what made him do that. Let's wish both of them good luck and move on with our day. Wish her luck? The fucking dead lady? I tried to convince myself he just didn't pay attention. That soothed me for about an hour, until I was in the middle of making dinner and he complained that it was already 6.45pm. I told him he shouldn't be that hungry yet, he just ate half a bag of chips and left them on the table. So instead of A, helping me finish dinner, B, apologising and waiting silently and patiently, C, finishing the bag of chips, or D, just laughing it off, he threw the bag of chips at me. Seven years together, four married, and he's never done anything that downright rude, because low self-esteem aside, that's something that won't fly with me either way. The chips landed all over the floor I had just mopped and swept. Whatever glare I gave him, it was enough to make him grab the broom in 30 seconds. It wasn't enough to make him check, at least, that it was all swept up and vacuumed after. So when I finished dinner and brought our plates to the dinner table, thinking, wow, I really spoil him, the entire time we've dated, I've always made his plates and brought them right to him, no one has ever done that for me, and I stepped on a chip. It didn't hurt or anything, but I screamed. Not sure why, I just couldn't take it anymore. So I ran to the home office and came out with the papers and pen, put them in front of his dinner plate, and walked out while he was yelling my name. I'm killing a burger and fries in my car right now, and realising I have to start over. My life is done. My love for him is too. I hope I don't cave. I hope I don't let him convince me. I hope if I start to change my mind, I come back and read this post, so that I understand that this is not a heated decision, this is something I need to do if I ever want anything like a real f***ing life. Wow, that one was- that was long, but yeah, there's layers to that. First of all, a 15 year age gap. Like, age gaps aren't always a bad thing, but 15 years and starting when you were 20 years old, that's a big age gap. That That's nearly twice your age. If you were 20 and he was 35, that's five years off twice your age. That's a big age gap. Man, that plus the fact that he seems to kind of just be like a man-child, an immature man-child who gets everything served to himself. The woman was killed by her husband and he was just like, we don't know what made him do that. Mm. Yeah, of course. That's not the reaction. Like, no matter what was going on in their relationship, that's not the reaction to that. Like, <laughs> they might have been arguing a lot and been in a really unhealthy relationship, but you don't just be like, wow, well, he could have been pushed to do it. Mm, okay, yeah. No, I, I think getting out of that relationship is better for OP here. They can get on with their own life they can find someone who will actually care for them and that they can care for and that, you know, caring for them is something that is worthwhile. There's a lot of posts in this subreddit about divorce. I've not got many posts in this video because these are long and I know I'm going to talk about them, but like a solid 80% of these posts were about breakups and divorce. So yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, my wife is dead. The best Christmas present I could have gotten. At the beginning of 2022, I caught my wife having an affair with one of her exes. Our marriage wasn't perfect, I was not the perfect husband, I will admit, but I did my best. I put effort into the 
entire five years we were together, I put my all into the relationship. Her, I could not say the same. I was forced to confront the reality of who she truly was shortly after I caught her. She illegally evicted me from our shared home, lied to the police to try and get me arrested, tried to get me fired from my job, and tried to turn all my friends against me. Some of these succeeded, while others did not. She has made my life a living hell since the day I asked her for the divorce, and has planted her heels into the ground over our separation to try and drain all my finances and emotional strength from me. The only upside is we had no kids for her to use as weapons. But I soon found out that her policy of strict birth control with me did not extend to her suitor, as he got her pregnant five months ago. I thought maybe this would help speed along the divorce, but it only rallied her in her efforts to destroy me. On Christmas Eve, my wife and her suitor went to a party where both of them got drunk. I find this fact terrible as all her friends knew she was pregnant as well. Her suitor drove her home, a mistake that would cost them both their lives. In the state I live in, our divorce is now considered to have never even started. I will be able to claim her life insurance policy for myself and move back into my home. Her parents called me up distraught yesterday, acting as if the last year had never happened and offered their full support to my funeral preparations to her. My confusion here was beyond belief, but the apple does not fall far from the tree when it comes to my wife. I told them if they want a funeral, it was coming out of their pockets. I will pay for her to be cremated and deliver her ashes to them in the cheapest urn offered if they desire. They called me horribly and tried to guilt me about her life insurance, but only after four minutes on the phone with them, I hung up and blocked every one of their family's numbers. I'm going to be taking a few extra days off work to move back into my house over the next week. I've already made arrangements to have her stuff hauled off so my home will be an empty canvas to start my life anew. I don't know if there is a god or if this was just karma, but I truly believe now that I have come out on the other side of the storm. Update. I have decided to elaborate on a few common threads I see on this post here, as responding to all of the comments would be too much. Firstly, some are judging me for the way I'm reacting to the death of three people. You're right, it is not normal nor is it healthy. I feel no emotions towards my ex at this moment. All my hatred, resentment and regret evaporated when I learned of her death. I feel nothing but relief right now. This void has slowly consumed me over the past few days. I feel numb, like I'm dreaming, like what happened is not real. This woman made my life a living hell for over a year. She set out to destroy me, but would not stop until she did. I do not like the fact that I feel this way over the death of three people, but that is not a box I feel ready to unpack at this moment. Secondly, I have reached out to my ex's mum today and things are much more civil as of now. I'll pay the hauling company to move her stuff into one of their storage units and they can figure out the rest. Her mother revealed to me that they cannot afford to host a funeral for my ex. I am 100% the legal beneficiary of her life insurance. Despite my past hatred for her family, I told her mother I will give them a small amount from her life insurance so they can have a service and arrange burial logistics for her. This is contingent on us cutting ties after and I will not be involved any further in her funeral. I will still be talking to a lawyer. Lastly, I am not going to elaborate any further except the only lives lost were hers, her suitor, and her unborn child. Some are saying I should sell the house. Right now, I only want to return to my home. The details of where I end up, either there or somewhere over the rainbow, are yet to be determined. I do not know what life holds for me, or for any of us. This event happened, maybe for a reason, or maybe the universe has no logic at all. This gift put an end to a period of my life that sent me to the brink of destruction. It's morbid to think that the death of three people was what pulled me to the other side alive. It's interesting how quick it can all change or end. Well that one was, I've said this a lot, but that one was a wild ride. Mm. Okay, so the wife, you know, not in the right in any way in any of this encounter. Like, horrible person, I get that. Didn't deserve to die, as did her suitor or the baby. None of that, you know, no deaths deserved there. This guy, maybe not in the wrong initially, and you know, death can do weird things to people. Grief comes in many ways, relief comes in many ways, trauma manifests in, in many ways. Being happy about her death isn't a good thing. Like, I get that she mistreated him horribly and tried to ruin his life, but her and two other people still died and that's not something to be happy about. All in all, there's just nothing really good that came out of this story. <laughs> this was a wild story. It was just bad followed by bad followed by bad, but that's life, I guess. Life doesn't always have a happy ending. It doesn't always have a like, this was resolved in the best way possible. This was resolved because a few people died in a car accident. Whatever that means, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> and the final post. My son wants to 
to be a landlord and is insulting me because I am a tenant. My, 41 male, son, 15 male, has taken a keen interest in becoming a landlord because he has also started insulting me for not owning my own house. I am glad to see he has taken some initiative, however I am concerned about his mindset. We currently live in an apartment and he has told me that I am a failure and a rentoid and that he is embarrassed to be related to someone without any land. Ah, so what you're saying, sorry to interject in this post, what you're saying is that your son is a classic fortune. That, okay, that tells us everything we need to know immediately. His son is someone that spends far too much time on 4chan and doesn't realize that a lot of 4chan is satire and made up. I try to explain him that houses cost a lot and that I have worked very hard to provide for our family and that there is nothing wrong with choosing to rent. I also explain to him that landlords often mistreat their tenants and that if he wants to be a landlord, he should work on being a kind one. However, he has insisted that it is the right of the landlords to charge whatever they want and has said when he is a landlord, he wants to evict single mothers, which I found very concerning. Yep, classic 4chan. He spends a lot of time on the internet and I am worried some ideas from online may be influencing his thinking. Well, OP, if you see this, it's definitely 4chan. This month, when the landlord came to collect rent, my son offered him a $50 tip out of his own money. I tried to explain you do not tip landlords, but he insisted I was being a greedy renter and taking advantage of the landlord. I explained that we paid significant rent already, but he did not listen. Before this started, he was really into video games and did not seem to try very hard in school, which I found concerning. On the one hand, his grades have improved and he even started walking around the neighborhood offering to shovel to make extra money, which he has put into savings. However, his words hurt me and I feel his mindset is not constructive and compassionate. I don't want to discourage his newfound success, but I am very worried about him. Edit, thank you very much for all the advice and attention. I will certainly have a frank discussion with him and restrict his access to the internet going forwards. Hopefully all will turn out well and it is not a sign of worse things to come. He is a good kid and I am sure with a little guidance will be right as rain. Yeah, I think the ending there is the best constructive outcome for this. Basically what this is is unrestricted access to websites like 4chan. Primarily you can tell by the language used that this came from 4chan. You know, using words like rentoid. Also it, I wouldn't have been surprised if he used terms like wagey. These are terms that come from 4chan. Children need to have access to the internet. Like, don't get me wrong. The internet is an incredible thing and children should have access to them. They should have access to video games. They should have access to technology. They shouldn't, however, have unrestricted. It is very, very important that you make sure you know what websites your children are using. Give them privacy, sure. But like, don't let your children have unrestricted access to websites like 4chan because they are, first of all, not child friendly in any regard. And second of all, carry really unhealthy mental ways of thinking a lot. For an adult, in a lot of cases, they can kind of determine that something is an unhealthy mindset and that it's probably satire and that these people are playing a game. But for a teenager or a child, I'm not sure that it's going to be perfectly evident that a lot of what is going on on 4chan isn't meant to be taken seriously. So it's one of those websites that probably shouldn't be accessible to young teenagers. And I think this is evident here, really. So yeah, no, I think talking to him and probably restricting his access to certain websites is a good move. And I, I think that's where I'm gonna end the video, everybody. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed. Oh boy, this was an interesting video. If you want to support me in making more content like this, then I have a Patreon in the description down below, or equally, you can click that join button on the channel to support me. It helps a lot more than you might realize, but by no means should you feel like you have to. But genuinely, like, especially it's January, YouTube revenue is down. That's kind of a normal thing on YouTube. It helps a lot if people support, but genuinely, I'm gonna keep making content, so, don't feel like you have to. Special thank you to all of the people that do support me, however. All of your names are on screen. You are all incredible, wonderful people. Thank you, all of you, so much. You don't actually understand how much it means to me, but, like, you you pay for my content, and that's something that I can't quite comprehend as, like, is my content really worth it? But people deem it so, and that just, yeah, that amazes me. So thank you, everyone that does support me. Genuinely, you mean the world. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you have enjoyed. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Peace out.